Hello Capricorn, welcome to your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries Tarot. Remember this is for Capricorn Sun, Moon and Rising. It is an energy reading. So whatever these energies I describe are, please apply them to where it resonates in your life. This is your reading. The examples I give are not locked into specific segments of your life. Wherever the, re the energy resonates is right for you. Um, this message comes to you at the right time. That's why I don't put dates on my readings. If you see this six months after it's gone live or six seconds after it's gone live, it comes to you at the time when you needed to hear the message. But if you want this stuff fresh off, fresh off the press, then please do subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you'll know in immediately when I upload your favorite content. Um, all right, there's also always an extended reading, Capricorn. Please do make sure that you join me for that. The link is in the description box below as well as in the top of the comment section. I will pin it too. So this is a beautiful, okay. The energy overall, the astrology overall is a beautiful week because the week begins with the 23rd and November 23rd is a gorgeous new moon. And even though it's primarily impacting, I would say Sagittarius, definitely. Pisces is going to feel a lot of this. Uh, even Scorpio. Um, everybody's going to feel it. It's just a beautiful day. Why? Because we have a new moon, which is the sun and moon conjunction, which is your heart and your soul in unison, um, ready for something fresh, ready for something new. But it, there's also the conjunction between Venus and Mercury to go along with that, all in Sagittarius, which is the sign of expansion and, and um, at learning, higher learning, higher education, travel, adventure, and fortune, fortune and luck, growth, things getting bigger, things getting wider, things um, um, increasing. It's, it's a very benefic energy, but all of this is in harmony, harmonized to Jupiter, which is the ruling dignitary of Sagittarius, and all of this energy is trying to it. It's also trying, I believe, to Chiron, which means there's a lot of repair and healing from past hurts, being able to apply, um, uh, productively apply what, what you've learned and what you've experienced to where you are now, to who you are now, and how you let it change you and allow that change to make you into a better person. There's so much beauty in this day for everybody to experience. But specifically for you guys, um, Saturn is stable, 100%. It's still, uh, I believe, it's, it's still trying to Mars in retrograde. Um, and it's still square to Uranus. It's not that that doesn't impact you. It's a, it, those things have been impacting you for a while now. So you've kind of been able to learn how to swim in this energy. What's going to impact you most then is after that moon leaves Sagittarius. After that moon leaves Sagittarius, it goes into Capricorn, which is, of course, your ruling energy house. Whatever it is for you, it may not be your first house, right? Um, um, but wherever it is for you, maybe you want to check your natal chart, that moon is going to really impact who you are and how you feel about yourself. And it's going to be emotional because the moon is going to conjunct uh, Pluto, which is still in Capricorn. And then the moon is going to cascade into Aquarius where uh, Saturn is, and the moon is going to conjunct Saturn, which is also going to be very emotional. All of this has to do with family matters, family issues, settling them out, figuring them out, how do they impact your life? It's not that it's going to be impossible. It's that it's going to become, since it's conjunction, overwhelming. And the emotion could basically take you out of other activities or things that you want to do. As long as you plan for it, which is why we watch astrology videos, right? As long as you prepare for the emotion and the emotional distraction, and that you're just going to want to be hyper-focused on those family matters, closing up things, things that are ending, empty nest syndromes, and then and then into Aquarius uh, where it's conjunct Saturn, which is any clashes with your parents, with paternal figures. What is, what have you learned from paternal figures or or fatherhood in general? Um, even if you are a wife and a mother, like things like that are going to be happening midweek to you. So. 
the good thing is that moon is moving from such benefic energy. I think it's taking that healing with it. So it's going to be a beautiful energy to heal those energies, but it's almost like you'll just be uber focused on using that benefic energy that's coming from Sagittarius. It, the moon is going to be a conduit of that for you. So don't hate yourself or get pissed at yourself for being distracted this week from your normal duties and responsibilities when your mind is turning in it's it's turning automatically to trust the energy trust where it's taking your focus it's turning automatically to let's let's dig down into fixing these issues fixing these problems and figuring these those things out as long as you don't fight yourself this will actually work out really well long term which is exactly what you like we got some cards on the table let's look at them here we go, here we go, here we go. So this automatically is saying, see the big picture. We have hawk energy, let spirit be your guide. And I actually just, just kind of said that to you in terms of the astrology. Let spirit guide you, trust the energy. Don't fight it, don't resist it. Y'all can be stubborn as fuck. And you know it, and I love you, and you know I love you. But you know it's almost like, you know, you have your schedule, you have your destination, you know where you wanna go, you have your plan. Spirit is going to guide you, especially as that moon is moving from Wednesday into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're going to want to allow yourself that time and that birth to, um, you know, go along with what spirit is saying because those conjunctions are very powerful. Moon conjunct Pluto is very powerful. Moon conjunct Saturn, since they're natural opposites, when they sit on top of each other, it's a very powerful, disruptive conjunction know that that is what you're supposed to be focusing on this week let let the energy like be guided capricorn by that energy don't fight it and it'll be actually extraordinary this is also about zoom out and see the big picture that's a clue as to how to handle some of the situations in your life right now zoom out and see the bigger picture because there's more going on with all those emotions and it will be a very emotional week, especially weekend for you. Know that it could be easy to take things very personally. Don't take them so personally. It's not personal. Don't give meaning to every little feeling. I love that meme. Don't give meaning to every little feeling. Just feel it and allow it to flow through you and be healed. Watch and wait. What I tell you, this is Piscean energy, <clears throat> and I got to say, I just heard this in my soul. You've seen this coming for a while. Perhaps the confrontation, you kind of felt it in the air. I don't know what this means, but you will have to gently face this now and confront this very emotional issue. Confrontation does not mean conflict, and it does not mean fighting. It just means facing something that's challenging and it will be emotional for you could have something to do with piscean energy could have something to do it's definitely something very emotional it's definitely something that has been building for a while it could even have to do with building from the past watch and wait i just feel like you've been feeling this coming for a while that's what i'm getting like you have been feeling this coming for a while you knew it but still zoom out and see the larger perspective of where that water wants to flow it may not be such a bad thing but you do have to face it and then we have act as if chameleon a like a fly on the wall you've been trying to not confront this you've been trying to just blend in this could be also a suggestion of watch and wait see the big picture don't make any decisions right now just allow things to flow and see where the water settles and but then we have kind of like yeah because it's just like blend in so that's very non-confrontational energy act as if i'm going to get deeper into that then we have be peace slow and steady wins the race and turn knowledge into wisdom and all these three cards are saying you will have had enough time to prepare for what is coming to you this is saying yes you do have to confront things but it will come to you confront things as they come for, to you confront things as they come to you don't go looking for them i know you guys like to be proactive that's not the position you have to play this week believe me you're going to have to confront things 
let it come to you the reason being is because of control especially with that moon con you know conjunct pluto moon conjunct saturn especially that's going to be when there's there could be major control issues especially with people who are highly emotional or with your own emotions so it's saying do not look for the battle when it comes to you handle it but it's if you have if if you're if i'm not just gonna say i'm just gonna say it if somebody is extremely overreactive over and very reactionary and you confront them they're going to be angry and you're not going to get through to them if you let them come to you and receive what they're saying or even you know what they're what they're crying about then you can pick through it and start to say, okay, because you came to me, now let's work through this together. At least you let them feel strong so you haven't taken away their strength. And that actually strengthens you and your position so you can get things done. Because you ain't gonna get nothing done if you go at this person. It's just not gonna happen. So let the feelings and let the emotions be what they are. <clears throat> whether they're coming from inside of you or externally. And I do feel like this is a, confront, a confrontation that's happening externally. Know that this person's feelings are about them, not about you. Though you still have to may help, help them work through it, or they, if you're married or you're in a family especially, or they're your friend, you, even if you're working with somebody, right? It could just be that if somebody's having an emotional day, you have to deal with that shit, right? Or, or somebody's dealing with family stuff at work and, you know, I mean, things happen. So it's saying watch and wait and let them come to you. Just blend in what finds you needs to find you. And that's how you know it's authentically yours. That you didn't go after it. You're just sitting there, doo -doo -doo, ooh, 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 I'm not here. What, what is yours will find you, including the conflict that you may have to resolve. But then at least you know you're not overburdening yourself with shit that you, that's none of your business, right? And here it is, be peace, be someone's peace, go slow, be patient. And this is, this is that moon energy, that, that energy, that Piscean energy. Again, you've seen it, you know what's going on. Take the knowledge that you've collected by watching and waiting and and basically just being a fly on the wall, take that knowledge and now turn it into wisdom as to how to navigate the situation and make it peaceful. That is exactly what you're doing, which is a lot of conflict resolution and reconciliation. So that's beautiful energy. And remember, you can apply this to any aspect of your life where it is significant. That could be resolution at work. That could be resolution, whatever, wherever. Let's get a moon card in, in here, shall we? And then we're going to get into the details. We have picked through the current situation. Let's see what comes out in the past. And then we're going to get into the future. Um, so first of all, the end of a tough cycle approaches. The moon is telling you that the end of a tough cycle approaches and communication is key. Capricorn, I think that's pretty blunt right? It's also saying that, remember, Gemini energy, Mars is in Gemini, and Saturn is trying to Mars, saying that you can use this energy of people being willing to go over and work through things again, talk to them, talk about what's needed, and you will be able to resolve an issue that has been building, or just a situation that you've worked really hard on, and that's needed resolution, but it's all through talking and communication. Talking and communication is not preaching at somebody. It, well, it is, but, but no, real communication is a two-way street. Once again, let somebody come to you. Your commitment is being tested. I don't think this is about your tenacity. I think somebody is coming at you, I think. I'm, I'm the tarot card reader here, right? Somebody is gonna come at you, accusing you of not being as committed to the job, the work, the marriage, the blah, blah, blah. That's what they're coming at you with. That's what they're coming at you with this week. This is going to be your primary challenge this week. Somebody's coming. I don't think you really love me. I don't think you really care. I don't think you're really committed to this task because you're always telling me that you have to be doing this and this with the family. But you know what? We need you here at work. I don't, you've heard it before. You're going to hear it today. 
Now, you've been feeling this, this is the thing. You, I've always said this, you are highly intuitive creatures, especially with communication because your natural communication third house is fucking Pisces. <laughs> okay. So it's like you're naturally intuitive with, with hearing subtexts of what people are saying, knowing why they're saying it because you can easily pick up on what they're feeling inside and, and knowing what's kind of triggering them. Um, somebody's going to be triggered. Somebody's going to be triggered, but you are going to be able to pacify them. I don't mean like a baby. I mean like actually, let's figure out the let's figure out the problem. Like let's let's this this is where you'll take your pause this week and say let's not go any further until we've actually picked through what's going on here because this is important to me and this job is important to me. This relationship is important to me you plug in whatever word you want wherever you want remember it's your reading it's where it resonates but of course it's important to me and i i know you've been feeling this the energy is gaining momentum duh this is coming up a little bit in the past so i would say maybe this has been building over the last couple of weeks or since the last new moon which would have been just a couple like i don't know uh when was the last new moon it was a, it was the uh, scorpio new moon so it was at the end of October. Yeah. Um, work through your fears. And that's what you're, that's, this is somebody's pain. Scorpio. Did you just see what that happened? I didn't even see this card. Scorpio new moon. It has been gaining momentum since the Scorpio new moon. This issue. It's pain. It's about suffering. It's about sadness. It's about fear. I mean, all that shit. It's about shame. All that shit that we hide in that Scorpio 8th house, right? That sense of all that pain, that toxicity, it's coming up. I would tell you this right now. It ain't about you. If you're dealing with somebody, okay, it could be about you if you're dealing with your own pain. But if you're dealing with somebody else coming at you, which I feel for most of you, this is what's going on. It really is about them. If it's your boss, it's because he's worried about, they're worried about the business. They're worried about the income. They're worried about the profitability, the margins. They're, you know, they got a lot of stress on them. Um, if it's a, a spouse or a son, daughter, a family member, you know, it's, it really is about them being scared about something, maybe being not good enough. They're in a transitional time in their life. The new moon and the full moon in, in, uh, during Scorpio season were hugely transitional energies. And not everybody reacts to that shit really easily. You know that from personal experience. So empathy empathy and compassion going to be two really big tools that you got to get out of your tool shed this week you're going to need it um it's time to take action yes it is it is time to take action now this is a new moon in aries so it doesn't have to be as aggressive as a full moon explosion but a sense of okay let's break ground here that's almost like ground break ground breaking energy which is maybe nobody's ever gotten to this pain before, which is good in and of itself. As, as even though it may, you know, if somebody's coming to you a blabbering mess or they're worried or they're accusing you of things, but at least they're showing their hand to you. They're showing you what the hell is going on inside of them and better have the knowledge and know what's going on so you can be productive than, than not. We have bring love into the situation. Isn't that beautiful, dude? That's beautiful. Love is going to help to really, really heal what's coming at you, especially with those accusations. That sense of, but I do really care about this. And you're not in it alone. And I think that that is really quintessentially what somebody needs to hear right now. You are not in this alone, right? This may be new for you. It may be new for me. Right, it may be new for for you guys, Capricorn. Like saying, "Oh wait, I don't have to do this all by myself." No, you don't. I mean, that's one of your biggest challenges, right? Is letting other people help you with the work, because the work gives you so much pleasure and it gives you so much joy. But you end up hoarding it and making somebody else feel like they they got nothing to do there, like they're worthless. People don't like to feel worthless. So engage them, let them come in, let them be productive alongside of you. This is about realizing that 
you have to take action together. You have to, because think Aquarius energy, community. You have to work in a partnership. You have to work as a community. You have to accept that you're part of a team. And that is how you are going to pass this test right here. And we haven't even gotten into the details yet. Who, who is this? Who is this? If it's not, if it's not Capricorn themselves, which it can be, well, first of all, that's what's coming out. You. So you're going to have to deal with this internally and externally. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Um, that's you. That's you. Always working, always working, always working. Grind into the bone. She's the person that everybody wants working for them, but things don't work out for her. It's not because she's cursed or because she's failing. No, she's a high achiever. She makes everything, she's a queen. So she's a feminine. She makes everything good for everybody around her. Okay. Queens need their fucking kings. Allow one into your life. I don't care. I don't care. Male, female, I don't give a fuck. But you, there is this energy of, let me do all the work myself. Let me spend all my money. Let me do all this. But then you don't give anybody else. But then you end up exhausted. Right? And that's how, listen, universe don't test us like idiots, right? Like fools. They don't test us like fools. They test us where we're weak. Can you, can you allow somebody to feel good? Wait, three of pentacles. Yeah. Something was really terrorizing somebody or terrifying you. There was a lot of stress about not feeling appreciated or feeling like nobody cares or nobody sees the hard work that I do or that the work that I'm doing is not going to be appreciated. This is keeping somebody up at night. Let's find out who I'm going to take you over to the extended. Before you go, please do remember to fill out that um, form. If you haven't, fill out the poll on my community tab. Tell me, are you interested in meet and greet with me in March? Let me know virtually. Well, you can you can partake from anywhere or come into Austin, Texas to meet me. There's no dates, there's no times, and this is not a commitment. I'm just trying to get in ballpark figure. Let us please now go to the extended. We're going to find out what this card is and who this motherfucker is.